The Rocky Mountains stretch hundreds of miles from Canada in the north to New Mexico in the south. These towering majestic peaks have an effect on many of drawing their hearts and minds up to God. Join us today as we visit an OCI ministry nestled in the foothills of the Rockies. The territory that now comprises the state of Colorado is filled with natural beauty. Tourists and outdoor enthusiasts come to the state year-round. The territory was originally the home of a variety of Native American tribes, among whom were the Arapaho, the Comanche, the Shoshone, and the Cheyenne. In the 1850s, a huge demographic shift took place in Colorado. Gold was discovered along the Platte River. At first, the discovery of gold was small and almost inconsequential. But then, in 1858, a major discovery was unearthed. Those individuals that came to Colorado were called the 59ers. They were seeking wealth and treasure. Today, many people come to Colorado for a different kind of treasure. The enjoyment of being out of doors, the challenges of hiking some of the peaks in the Rockies. Eden Valley Institute and Lifestyle Center assists those who are seeking for the treasure of good health. This year is our 50th anniversary. So the purpose was established a long, long time ago. And they started with a nursing home, which developed into a retirement center, and then we expanded to have a lifestyle center. And really, behind all of that, the purpose is to reach the community somehow with the gospel, using whatever avenue is at our disposal. And right now, I think our most effective approach to ministry is the lifestyle center. We've had a lifestyle center here for 20 or 25 years. It's been very successful. We've been blessed. The Lord has done a lot for us, through us. It's been wonderful. And because science advances, because knowledge advances, we keep getting new techniques and new approaches, and we're putting them all in the same buildings, and the buildings are becoming very crowded. Right now, the patients have to shuttle back and forth between two buildings. They have to go to one for meals. They have to go to another one for lectures. Men's treatment is in one building, women's treatment is in one building. And so we really have a, a sense that a new, bigger, one building, one floor lifestyle center would be very, very ideal. And so we're working with the county. We've got our master plan approved by the county. And I would hope within two years to have a new lifestyle center. A lifestyle center is a place where we receive people who have degenerative diseases, especially for cancer, and we would like to bring their lifestyle into harmony with God's program of healing, which is very, very natural. So we have a couple of doctors on staff, and we have therapists, and we use massage, and we use hydrotherapy treatments, hyperbaric chambers, and fasting, and juicing, and uh, supplements. We use everything we can use in an effort to help the people with their health. But the main ingredient in all of this is the eight, what we call the eight laws of health. We have a little rock garden that has a new start. Those describe the uh, eight laws of health that we use here. The M stands for nutrition and we tend to emphasize nutrition a lot because it's one of the main uh, ingredients where America has really kind of gone off track. Uh, exercise is the E. It can decrease your risk of cancer. It can decrease your risk of recurrent cancer if you've overcome cancer. Water is encouraged as well, drinking plenty of water. The S stands for sunshine. T is temperance, avoiding completely all things that are bad. Cigarette smoking, alcohol, caffeine. And we get to the A, which is fresh air. R is for rest. And lastly, trust in God. 
Stress has been shown to, to affect our ability to fight diseases, uh, infectious diseases, cancer diseases. And when we try to shoulder the responsibilities that only God can shoulder, we're going to fail. We're going to come under stress. We have an hour's devotion with everyone every day. And the whole effort is to get to increase their faith. Because if a person will be very positive, if a person will be optimistic, if they will have confidence and faith in a God outside of themselves, then they can find healing. Probably 60 to 70 percent of our patients are now cancer patients. And it's so amazing. Cancer is just a pandemic. I mean, I, you know, they say heart disease is the number one, but I think cancer is going to be soon overtaking that. And we've been reading a lot of other studies that suggest that that's really a reality. Obesity is rampant, diabetes is rampant, osteoporosis is rampant, heart disease is rampant. Uh, it's epidemic and lifestyle changes need to be made. Around 1900, lifetime risk of getting cancer was just one in 40. Uh, by 1945, it was one in 20, and now it's around one in three people in their lifetime can expect to get a form of, some form of cancer. We have established a, a reputation for being very aggressive in dealing with cancer, and there's been a degree of success, and that is, is finding it, its way out there. What we do mostly here is to boost people's immune systems. You know, God has designed our bodies to heal itself. And our immune system is just amazing. It's, it's the most powerful agent for healing. More than drugs, more than anything that man can do. Everybody has cancer cells in their body. Everybody, it doesn't matter who. But if your immune system is compromised for whatever reason, environmental, lifestyle, stress, you know, whatever the reason is, if your immune system is compromised, then the cancer overcomes you. One of the couples that came this session is Pete and Martita. They're fully immersed in the program. They're participating 100%. And we really, really like patients like that because they get the best results. I found out about it uh, probably late September of 2011 at a diagnosis of cancer and it was, uh, it was uh, not a good prognosis either, so it was kind of tough. And we were, I was able to uh, uh, find a procedure that would help, you know, help with the uh, cancer treatment. I had the procedure done and came back, and everything seemed to be pretty good, but uh, I wanted to follow up with some post care, so to speak. And so we decided to come here. And I was having some problems, there were some issues with uh, some anxiety and stress as a result of the of the, uh, everything that, we, that I'd gone through, or we'd gone through together. <laughs> he had cancer 19 years ago, almost 20. At that time, he was also given a, a poor prognosis um, and uh, with no hope. And uh, this second time around, um, it was devastating for us to hear that this cancer, um, a different type of cancer, had come about and in the professional opinions expressed by the physicians that we saw, this was also very poor and um, there was nothing to be done. We brought it before the Lord and He has been uh, so merciful and given us every opportunity. And we feel that Eden Valley has been um, the place for us. It uh, opened up the doors and has brought about so much restoration in every aspect, spiritual, physical, mental, emotional, that um, we praise God for everything. We've been very impressed and very blessed uh, with the staff here and the people mm -hmm. that are involved in the organization. They do, a, they really are caring and they really look after, you know, your, your needs when you're here. You know, they, they make you feel at home as much as they possibly can. You know, they become like family after a short while. Our, our goal is to have patients experience a lifestyle change here and learn how to do it so that they can continue it at home. So we have cooking classes, we have lectures to encourage them as to why these things work and how they've been shown to be working. In lifestyle programs, many times we'll ask the patients, you know, hey, how many think you're going to have no problem continuing this when you leave? And 90% will raise their hand because it's so easy when they're in a, in a setting like this. 
And they said, well, actually, the 10% are probably the more correct. And so we say, you know, we, we would like while you're here to connect into a power that can help you maintain the choices you've made. And that's where spiritual component comes in. We found that a lifestyle program without a spiritual emphasis leaves patients with the knowledge of what to do, but without any power from God to continue on what they're, what they're deciding to do. There are some people who come here and they don't know that they've come for uh, spiritual healing. We've had experiences with people who have been Christians all their lives, but when they get to the end of life or they, something, they have cancer, all of a sudden they start to question whether they really have salvation or not. And, and a huge fear enters their hearts. And I believe with all my heart that the Lord is able to give us the words to speak. And of course, there's all the promises of God and the gospel itself. And somehow the Lord has been able to use us in giving people the assurance that they lack when they come. The scriptures have a very specific power within, uh, a power to convince and convict and to give assurance. And seeing that I do the devotional with the lifestyle guests and I specifically aim at making the gospel as attractive and as simple and as understandable and as applicable as I can to these lifestyle guests, I get a monthly dose of my own medicine. It's not my medicine, but it's the medicine I dish out in any case. And, and really, I don't, I don't know if there's anything that's more of a blessing to me than that. A change in diet is an important part of the lifestyle program. The guests are taught how to prepare a variety of different foods, and as importantly, how to incorporate a lot of fresh foods into their menus. To help facilitate that, Eden Valley's farm provides fresh organic produce. In addition, the farm provides a bridge to the local community. The neighbors are able to come and participate in Eden Valley's UPIC program. The team attends various local farmers markets, providing produce to a wider audience. In this way, Eden Valley's farm serves as a ministry to the guests as well as reaching out to the local neighbors. We've always wanted to keep the farm going, first of all, as an educational tool, but it turns out to be far more than just that. We want to learn to grow our own food. We know there's coming a time when we're gonna to need to grow our own food. Well, of course, we have the Lifestyle Center and it's the center of everything that we do pretty well here but the organic farm plays a huge part and it's going very, very well. We've got one of the best farmers I've seen so far. We have um, Japanese eggplant here and I have two different varieties of bell peppers and then I have another Italian eggplant over there and then another variety of bell peppers on the other side. And then on that side I have uh, brandy wine tomatoes, black cherry tomatoes, yellow cherry tomatoes, red cherry tomatoes, and then I have slicing tomatoes. We supply our lifestyle center with fresh produce. Mainly we try to grow everything that the, our lifestyle center use, because they buy a lot of stuff for their programs, and we grow mainly everything they use except for the fruits. And then the remaining, we send them to the local farmer's market. Agriculture is the ABC of our education program, but it's really hard to make money on it but we had two farmer's markets that we supplied last year and we actually made money. The country store makes money every month. It's stuck away in a corner of our campus, but it, it's in the black every month. We want to eventually move it out to our road so that it's more visible, uh, you know, that we can reach out to a wider scope of customers because it's a community service too, you know. Everything that we do, we want to be an outreach somehow. We also have a UPIC program where people from the community come and get involved. They come and pick their own stuff. You know, Eden Valley was sort of known for UPIC. We actually went out to the community and we did a community survey. And most of them knew what Eden Valley's UPIC program was. And they wanted that again. So last year we started the UPIC program, uh, but on a limited basis. But this year we're going to expand it and 
we've already sent out flyers to the community and, and yeah, they're, they're interesting. We have this greenhouse and then we have another three greenhouses down here, um, a little smaller than this one, plus the orchard up here, which is started this year, and then the raspberry patch. Out in the field, we have uh, conventional produce like broccoli, cauliflower, cabbage. It produces for the lifestyle guests organic, fresh vegetables, you know, almost all year. And that's a huge boon uh, when you can do that. And then, of course, we can sell it to the neighbors and stuff like this. So it's, it's outreach. It's outreach far more than we understand uh, just doing it. And we're anticipating using it, of course, in the education program. And the lifestyle guests, they get to see what's going on. They get to eat the food. They get the benefit. Many of the guests that visit Eden Valley's Lifestyle Center find the treasure of restored health. When we return, we'll explore another avenue in which Eden Valley uses the healing arts to communicate the gospel of God's grace. Pain, suffering, and hopelessness are everywhere we look. As Christians, we know that the ultimate answer is Jesus. We are called to bring people to Him, as well as to share His love in practical ways. Can you imagine the difference it would make if every church member did all that we can to share our hope, that's what OCI is all about. Lay people using their skills to reach their communities and bring change. Whether through lifestyle centers or schools, restaurants or clinics, the methods are diverse, but the goal is the same, to bring hope and healing to our dying world. In order for this work to continue, prayer, workers, and funding are all necessary. When you support OCI, you support the work of more than 80 ministries around the world. For more information about how you can become involved, please contact us anytime. In order to broaden their outreach, the team at Eden Valley has incorporated an educational component into their ministry. Utilizing their farm, practical skills taught in the Wellness Center, as well as classroom activities, their aim is to equip their students with the necessary tools that they can be effective servants for Christ wherever He leads them. We used to have an education program here it was called the World Mission Course. We would train young adults and everything that we thought would equip a person in the mission field. So there would be natural remedies, and there would be hydrotherapy, and massage, and there would be agriculture, and they would also do evangelism. Eden Valley used to be known for their World Missions course, and it had sort of two tracks to it. There was agriculture missionary and medical missionary training. And the agriculture missionary training used to be huge. And so we want to restart our education program, not focus so much on agriculture to the extent that it was, but we are going to have two tracks for people. People can come and learn about agriculture missionary program or medical missionary. But both programs are going to be very heavily mixed in with evangelism. Another exciting thing about here at Eden Valley and with our education department is the organic farm. We're integrating that into the program so that students can come and get experience, hands-on experience in, in organic agriculture. We want people not just to learn about medical missionary and agriculture missionary, but what to do beyond that, to bring the people that they're working with to a decision for Christ. The main goal is to make people practical in the hope that they'll go to the mission field and use it. So the name of the program uh, is, is entitled The Well at Eden Valley, and it stands for training health educators with evangelism, lifestyle, and leadership. If you look at John chapter 4, the Sumerian woman, she came to the well to relieve her physical necessities, but then she found Jesus there at the well. So there's the three areas that we want to focus on in our, in our training is not only personal, but public and health evangelism so that you can go back wherever you work, maybe in your home church, 
as a Bible worker or overseas that you can lead out in, in evangelism. As you look in this world, um, look around what's happening, uh, you can see that the times that we live in dictate that we need to have a call for action, that we need to do something, we need to spread the Three Angels' messages because there's people out there that are, that are open, that are hungry, that are waiting for, for somebody to come share the, the joy, the, the peace, the love of Christ that we have. And if, if we don't do it, who will? You know, I worked with ASI Youth for Jesus, and one of the most common things that I've heard from my Bible workers was that they wish they could help people in their homes. Because so many homes you go in to do Bible studies, they have health problems, they have health issues, they have, you know, stress and, and smoking and alcoholism, all those kinds of things. And so if the Bible workers could learn, you know, the basics of medical missionary help, it would just be huge. I find that the majority of people aren't really open to Bible studies, but you find that people are really open to health and the health message. So I think now is a, is a great time uh, to, to be able to take the message of health to people in the community. And there's a specific quote that I think of. It says, relieve the physical necessities of your fellow men and their gratitude will break down the barriers and enable you to reach their hearts. And so the method is very simple. If we can bring health into people's homes, into people's lives in simple practical ways, you know, that will break down barriers in, in people that aren't readily interested in Bible studies and so that we can share the gospel of Jesus Christ with them. Because of the fact that people are open to the message of health, we have established a certified wellness coaching program. And I think it's really interesting that the, the, the term wellness coach is really a, a, a trending term that people are really getting more interested in. And so what we're doing is we're training medical missionaries, but when we go out into the community, we send them out as wellness coaches um, in order to, to, to reach people. You know, maybe they're not open to Bible studies or maybe they're not readily interested in the Bible or prophecy or anything like that. But here is an extra avenue that you can come and get trained and you can reach people by His promises in the spirit of prophecy that they will, their hearts will be open to the message. I grew up in a, in a home where everyone was miners and loggers. Nobody went to school. There was no highly educated people in, in the family. And so with a family of three kids and a wife and a home and, and everything else we had, it just didn't seem feasible to go and, and get an education. But it wasn't long in studying the scriptures. We really wanted to be involved in missionary work somehow. And we found it. We found it at OCI. We found it at ASI. You can see the wisdom in the Lord in organizing some entities like OCI and ASI who could make room for people who wanted to serve the Lord but did not have the master's degrees or the PhDs. There's plenty of places that need workers. I mean, Jesus Christ said that the harvest is great, but the laborers are few. So there's not a shortage of places where somebody can go. There's people out there that need our help. This is why we're here. We're going to be doing an evangelistic meeting this fall. So we're starting to do a community outreach event every six weeks. So we've done three cooking schools, we've done a simple remedies, natural remedies seminar, uh, we've done health emphasis weekends. We have a core group of people from the community that are coming, every single one. They love it. And then Messiah's Mansion from Oklahoma Academy is coming. They're going to set up their sanctuary on Interstate 25. And there's four area churches that are all involved. Our church is one of them. And that, that is getting really a, a response already. And we'll be holding cooking schools, medical seminars, agriculture seminars. They haven't done an evangelistic program in this church for a while. So we're really looking forward to that. We just hired a young Bible worker and we're hoping that she will build up a, a group of people who are really interested in knowing the scriptures. We're following that with the Messiah's Mansion. And we're hoping that's going to draw a lot of interest. It usually does. And then from that, we're going to advertise an evangelistic series in October 
based on the sanctuary. We have several missions that we're directly involved with. We don't really do the management of those ministries, but we, we were responsible for raising funds for them. So the AIDS orphan program in Tanzania, the orphanage program in India, the outreach to the Tarahumara Indians in Mexico, uh, Dominican Republic, the Country Life and Lifestyle Center there, uh, Mauna Kagi in Japan. You know, these are all ministries that really need support. And these are ministries that are they're not big, they're not large, but they're, they're ministries that are doing a tremendous amount of outreach. Well, I'm especially close to the OCI family. I had the opportunity of working there personally as the executive vice president, and even today I'm the board chairman of OCI. So there's been a very close, close connection for me uh, to OCI. But as an institution, it's also invaluable. The yearly retreats and the networking that we're able to do and the family, just that by itself would be enough to belong to a group of people such as Seventh-day Adventist Christians, lay people even, uh, organized to do as much as we can do for the Lord. It's, it's been huge, a blessing. It really has. I believe in Eden Valley only because I believe that this is where God has set us up. This is where God wants to work. This is where God has worked. There's been wonderful years at Eden Valley and there's also been years of decline and we are praying and working to reestablish Eden Valley on a more solid footing. I, we're near, we're close. The Lord is blessing more and more and more. For 50 years, Eden Valley has kept their goals steadfastly in view. Their aim is to help restore people to health, mentally, physically, and of course, spiritually. They long to introduce the people that they meet to Jesus Christ. You can have a part in this ministry. Perhaps you know someone that would benefit from their lifestyle program. I encourage you to consider what you can do not only to help this ministry, but the worldwide ministry of OCI. We value your support. To find out more, please visit us on the web at outpostcenters.org. Or you can send an email to info at outpostcenters.org. We'd always like to hear from you in person as well. Feel free to call us. Our phone number is 423-236-5600. For OCI Reports, this is Stephen Gravener.